Hey everybody, got a, a little explanation here about how the neck works. I'm not going to go into it fully, so this will be a riff, but a lot of people have been asking about um, how this whole thing goes together, and I thought I'd show you one of my favorite days in guitar making, and that's the day that we, we cut through the top to uh, reveal the um, aluminum tube socket that's in installed in the neck block. So of course this is the receiver for the neck and it, uh, it allows me to adjust the neck for, for height and thereby regulate the action of the guitar. And it also makes it so that there's no heel so you can, by the time you're here, you can pretty much get the whole second octave of a guitar without a lot of trouble. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, in order to do this, when the top is glued on, I've made these bushings that are designed to go in there. And you can see there's, there's four flats on the on this bushing. Now the bushing itself won't go in the hole, but the flats will go in the hole. And then I built this little tool that goes in there. And then with a wrench, I can tighten this a little bit. And when I pull this tool out, this is nice and rigid. And because I've cut, made the part accurately, it puts the hole right in the center of the neck joint. And then I use a pin to align the top, and there's a quarter inch hole in the top, which you'll see in just a moment. Anyway, so then to remove it, of course, just go like that. Come on. <laughs> and then it comes out. So that's the holding system for helping to align the top while we're, while we're gluing it on. And, and so it ends up with a hole like this. Now we're going to take this, this piece out of here and cut and uh, reveal this square socket. So I'm going to switch to another guitar and demonstrate that. Okay, so here's a guitar. This is a guitar made from the tree. Uh, I think you... Some of you may have seen me bend the sides for this guitar, and here it is. Very, very close to being ready for first coat of finish. And you can see the, the hole that I was describing. It's just a, a quarter inch hole. I've built this tool, made this tool in my metal shop. So this cutter can move up and down the quarter inch pin. It's a close fit. And I've created, gosh, I don't know how many there are here. Let's see, it's about, yeah, it's about 20 teeth in uh, uh, some indexing device on the milling machine. And I, I cut these teeth with a little bit of rake. You can see there's a, a little rake going like that. And then I sharpened the ends of them with um, clearance um, in order to cut through the plate. So the way this works is, get this to go in there. And then the tool comes down and I run it backwards first so that just to, because as I said, there is rake on the tool. So I make sure I cut all the way around and maybe a little bit more in the reverse, you know, the kind of the wrong direction. And then, then we're going to turn it in the clockwise direction like this, <clears throat> the way the tool was designed to cut, and we know we're not going to lift any, you know, little pieces of wood 
on the top. And um, this is just the work of a couple of minutes. <laughs> it's one of my favorite jobs because it's kind of sort of feels a little bit like magic. You can see um, that it's starting to bevel the inside. Of course, this is the this is the part that we'll end up with when we're done, the scrap. Of course, I guess you could figure out how to do this with a cordless drill. It wouldn't take very long, but <laughs> it's kind of fun to do it this way. Use this little tooling system I created by hand. As within a lot of things in instrument making, when things start to get cut or change, you can hear it. Did you hear that? <laughs> that was the first little fibers letting go on this tall side. Hear more of them, and finally the end of it. So take that out. <laughs> you can see this is obviously not attached anymore since it's hanging there in the wrong direction. And there we go. So the next job is to use a knife. And this is just a, just, just a regular, what is it, three-quarter inch hawk blade um, designed for violin makers. Strongly suggest everybody get one of these or, or more if you need to use them a lot. Um, and with this knife, I'm going to cut out the corners of this square part and, um, and release the plastic bushing.
Okay, so that's one corner. Now I'll do the other three off camera and we'll take it up from there. All right, here we are. I've cleaned out the corners pretty well with a fine line maker's knife. And I put the tool in there and now we're gonna rotate this counterclockwise. Of course it would work in either direction, but. And then it just barely slides out of there. Okay, and then this is uh, just a tool with two, two pins in it that line up with it, uh, the center hole, of course, and then this other hole to, in order to rotate it. And in case I have trouble getting it out, I have another hole here that's tapped. So if I need to yank on it, I could put a screw in there. But it seems to work pretty well. Everything's never had any real trouble with it. So now the next job, the final job on this, is to you know, go back in with a violin knife and clean out the corners to perfectly align with the aluminum tube inside. And then use some 320 grit sandpaper in here to, uh, to clean it all up. Um, and the final refinement on this is that the front edge here where the neck is going to be leaning, I, I move the, some material away, uh, cut back a spruce at an angle of maybe, I don't know, 10, to, 10 or 15 degrees, something like that. And so you could see a tiny little gap in front of the neck, but that's okay because I don't want the neck pressing directly on the top. Um, it could be a problem sometimes when you adjust it if it's leaning on the top. So uh, that's kind of what I wanted to show you today. I know it's a teaser, but we'll get into this whole neck and neck socket thing. And it's a really good system. Uh, I've never had a failure or any kind of problem with it. And I'm really happy with how it works. So that's that.